the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Michael's and All Angels, that is our festival for today, where we focus on St. Michael, who's not really a saint as we would call one in the traditional sense. As Michael is not a human being who has done some great thing or had some great sacrifice for God, such as Martin Luther or St. Francis of Assisi, Michael is an angel, the archangel actually, the head of all angels, the front of the angel army, the mightiest warrior in God's chosen elite. Now we know very little about Michael overall. He shows up sparingly in the scriptures, in Daniel and Revelation, and some inferences to Michael in the book of Jude. The most we know about him, we heard today in our readings. His role as a warrior, both in heaven and ultimately on earth, when the great consummation happens. To that end, we could infer a whole lot of things about Michael. We could weave all kinds of stories about Michael and turn to the non-canonical text, which there's a great deal about Michael in the non-canonical text, all of which would be fine. However, I don't want to go there today. I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time on Michael. I want to talk about God. I want to talk about God and Michael's role with God, and what we see about God with the archangel Michael. In the book of Revelation, we are told that war broke out in heaven, that the dragon, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, whatever word we want to put on, decided that whatever God was asking was not acceptable. So rebellion broke. And in the rebellion, we see two incredible things about God. Grace and power interweave. For rebellion is a bad thing. And the king or ruler who is being rebelled against wants to squash it. The quicker, the better. Make it go away. Eradicate the rebels. Think Darth Vader here for a minute. Yet God shows an immense amount of grace and power. The one who rebels against God is one of God's creators. But by sending Michael to fight the war in heaven, we see an immense amount of grace and power. For if God would have heaved himself off the throne and joined the fight, well, there would have been no fight at all. This is the Almighty here that we're talking about. A name which comes from forming two words together, all and mighty. So there is nothing mightier than God. If the divine would have entered the fray, the devil, the dragon, Satan, would have been eradicated, would have been removed, would have been God. Which we may think, well, it if he had done that, then things would be a little bit different. Things would be a little bit better, right? I mean, if, God, if, if Satan wasn't around, then hey, everything would be great. Yet God, by grace, did not eradicate the devil, giving even Satan the chance to repent. Which is good for us. 
Because how many times do we rebel in a day? How many times do our wandering hearts rebel from what God asks us to do? God did not enter this fight, for the divine did not need to. He sent Michael, the archangel, the warrior, into the fray to fight the dragon, since God would have been too powerful. And in the time to come, looking forward into the great consummation, once again we see that God does not keep himself off the throne, but sends the warrior Messiah and the archangel into the fight. God will stand above the fight. It will be others who will wage this war. God shows power in knowing that in one swipe with the almighty hand, it would all be done. But grace comes in, in repentance. Awesome. So what's the takeaway with this for us? Where do we go with this heavenly war, this Michael, God, devil thing? I just want to figure out how I'm going to get through the week, and get my mind sleep, and get to the gym, and eat right. I mean, the war in heaven's awesome. But where does it bow down for us? Here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to know. God does not have to heave himself off the throne to fight this war. For the divine is too powerful. There would be no war to fight. Michael, the great angel, fights for God because God would be too much for this fight. And yet, God heaves himself off the throne. For us. This God does not have to enter the fight for the ages, but sends the warrior to do this. Not because God is incapable, but because there will be no fight at all. This God fights for us. This God chooses to fight for us. The Almighty chooses to be present with us. Emmanuel. That is what we proclaim at Christmas. God with us. This God who is unconcerned with the devil's ultimate power chooses not to sit by and watch but comes to fight for us. Comes to stand with us. that sink in. Let that resonate for a moment. If you can't see the power in this, well then, enjoy the quotes for a few minutes. The one who has no need to enter the war over the devil is willing, is willing to enter our wars. Stand with us, aid in us, and fight for us. This is how big God is. This is how powerful and mighty God is. Which begs the question, is God that big for you? In all seriousness, how mighty is the Almighty in your worldview? in your life circumstances, in your situations and decisions and actions. For many, God is nothing more than the handmaid who comes in and cleans up messes and unlocks the doors to eternity, but is absent in stress and anxiety and work and decisions and family and finances. God is the net under the tightrope to catch the one who's walking it and falls, but is never the hands balancing the wall. Our God is so powerful that He does not have to enter the war in His house. But He is willing to enter our wars. Do we let this God fight for us? Do we ask this God to fight for us? 
to stand with us? Do we seek the one who can move mountains to move them in our lives? How big is God? We see today that God is bigger than everything and anything. So how big is your God? Is your God bigger than everything? Is your God able to address, overcome, resolve what's in your life? Is your God part of everything or just a few things? Look, cut to the bone. If your God is not bigger than everything, if your God is not stronger than everything, if your God is not able to stand with you in everything, then you have the wrong God. Because the God who presides over this house is that good. The God who presides over this house doesn't have to fight the war in heaven. But is willing to stand with you in your war. The God who presides over this house is the one who climbed up on the cross and defeated death. Is your God that big? If so, praise be. If not, then you need to